Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about tracheostomy tube themselves. So the opening itself here called tracheostomy, right? The tube, tracheostomy tube, this is the, let me just change the color. This is the tracheostomy tube. Tracheostomy tube can come in different shapes and different sizes. Uh, they can be um, uh, coughed versus uncoughed, which means coughed means they have a balloon here, like ET tube, and coughed they don't have a balloon. They can also be angled like this one. They come like this. Some they are curved. They come like this. So angled can go straight like this and then kind of more vertical angle and curved come like this everybody has uh, everyone has its advantages and disadvantages also they come in different sizes different length you want to make sure it's not too short because too short will irritate the posterior tracheal wall and make cause problem and too long may curve anteriorly and cause irritation of the anterior wall you want to also pick the right length so you don't get close to the uh, uh, brachycephalic artery or innominate artery and the risk of fistula and life-threatening bleeding. Uh, this, this is a tracheostomy tube as you see it has the cough which is the, the balloon and this is um, um, these can be single cannula or single lumen cannula, which means one tube from here to here, or can be double, which means a lumen uh, a tube here that the inner tube is a disposable replaceable one. Yeah, you can remove it and insert a new one instead. And if you ask me the better one, I would pick the double cannula, if I can say that the one with the disposable inner uh, lumen because if you have a mucus plug or a problem you can just uh, discard it and put a new one while if it's a, a single lumen single cannula you have to suction and keep suctioning to clear that um, and I, I remember a case where the patient uh, literally had a very thick mucus plug and she became very hypoxic and she coded for a minute and we have to call the even the surgeon and uh, eventually it was a big big mucus, mucus plug that was there and that's part of the general care to um, continue uh, like to have suction periodically uh, periodically uh, uh, to prevent such uh, catastrophic complications uh, this is also another type which is a fenestrated you see the this and this is Mainly we use it for somebody who's not on mechanical ventilation and in the process of weaning him of the tracheostomy tube or what we call the cannulation we'll talk about later on. This is also what we call the flange. This is where, you see this is the tracheostomy tube. This is the outer, uh, the one we see it. And then you see the cannula, the, the tube is going like this. This is the flange that attach the tube to the skin of the neck. And doesn't allow to, the tube to be lost in the trachea, right? These numbers usually give you the, the the type and size and the model of the tube, and you will see one of these um, types for sure on every tracheostomy. Now let's wrap up this. So it's either cuffed or versus uncuffed. It's either fenestrated that has the opening as we just showed you versus none or unfenestrated, right? In mechanical ventilation, you have to use coughed, non-fenestrated. It makes sense, right? To prevent aspiration, non-fenestrated, if you use the fenestrated, you will get air leak and you lose the pressure. So you use coughed and non-fenestrated. And then different sizes. And then they can be a single lumen cannula or double cannula as we explained. Usually the person, the surgeon, 
will pick which one of those but they by default for mechanical vintage they will pick cuffed and non-fenestrated now the general care once this ET the tracheostomy tube the general can include frequent suctioning right usually suture removal within 48 to 72 hours if you get to this question by always refer that to um, the surgeon make sure and, and, and you don't have to really let the nurses or respiratory therapists they know that humid air being given only and that's automatically by default if the patient is mechanical on mechanical ventilation minimize irritation which means make as less movement of the tracheostomy tube as possible sometimes you do irrigations and the monitoring for any complication But very important that you make sure frequent suctioning, very important to make sure the secretions always thin, easy to suction to prevent mucus plugging. So as I said, this is just to give an idea how the tracheostomy tube looking. Most of these details, the surgeon will be um, have much better experience than us in picking the right tracheostomy tube and size and all of that. And you just need to be aware of these things next we'll talk about the complication that can happen after tracheostomy tube that we need to be aware because we could be the first one that need to work on those and how to treat them thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released glad to have you on board